Welcome everyone to a Han patch analysis here for uh, version 4.9.2, which just uh, hit the game today here, March 30th. So we got a big patch here to talk about, lots of balance changes, etc., etc. Going to be a lot of fun here. Before we uh, before we get started, just want to uh, remind you guys to please. Um, Hit that subscribe button and drop a like on the video if you do appreciate the content. But uh, let's go ahead and we'll get started here. we got a lot of stuff to talk about. So we're mainly going to focus on the balance portion of the patch. We'll skip over a lot of the cosmetic and uh, we'll, well, bug fixes and all those types of things. But we'll go, we'll go through most of the stuff here. So we'll start here with design and new content. So we have legacy loading screens rotated into the game. Some new Miku products you can see here, Taunt, Word, and TP effects. So these are some cosmetic stuff. Throwback avatar here for Bramble. Here we have some staff of the master and legacy changes. So here we have some balance stuff. So Bloodhunter hemorrhage is his ultimate here. Staff of the master effect change to pre-existing radius increased here. From 250 to 325. So the staff effect making his ultimate become AoE. A slight increase here to the radius of the hemorrhage. Not the biggest change here, um, but it is going to uh, help to get that AoE hemorrhage a little bit nicer if you do pick up a staff of the master. Ophelia's staff command. This is her ability that takes over creeps. Staff of the master effect changed to pre existing. Movement speed bonus granted to an ancient creep changed from. 0 0.25 times the original bonus to 10. So this is uh, going to lower the uh, the movement speed there on the creeps, at least to my understanding. Change from 25 of the original bonus. Uh, so yeah, that should be, I believe, less. So they're not going to be super fast. Not the biggest change as well. Um, the biggest power of the Ophelia staff comes from getting those uh, high HP ancient creeps that can't be alchemist bone, uh, and they are able to push the buildings a lot quicker as they deal more damage, more durable, etc. So this change doesn't really uh, impact too much, at least to my understanding here. Prisoner. Prison Break. This is his ultimate staff and master effect change to pre-existing. Activation on self now reduces the effect delay by 50%. So you can cast the prison break on yourself with the staff of the master prior to this patch casting on self did not actually make the effect instant so it is both a bug fist and bug fix and a balance change so this is more of a bug fix but uh, a nice little buff there to his staff staff is uh, in my opinion one of the items that makes prisoner become a lot better uh, as the game kind of progresses as he's uh, Fairly reasonably countered by like an avoid talisman and, and such items. So the staff of the master makes him a, a much better hero, but this is a nice little buff to uh, how his self cast uh, of the prison break works. So here we have some staff visual effects. We're going to skip over those. Not really too much to talk about there. This one's a little nifty one illusion visuals. So illusions now have a new visual effect. Instead of simply applying a green texture over the original model, it now uses a light blue translucent material over the model. This visual effect for illusions will only apply for the owner of the illusions and their allies. In other words, enemy illusions will not appear to have this visual effect on them. So uh, if you're playing a hero with illusions, give the example here of Sandwraith, you spawn your second spell, which spawns two illusions. Uh, you will very easily be able to tell which is the real Sandwraith, your uh, your hero versus which is your illusions. They will have very distinct uh, color schemes. So that's uh, going to make quality of life a little bit easier for allies as well as yourself. Nice little change there. Forest of Kaldivar. Ally player controlled non-hero units near the level 3 towers will have unit walking for the first two minutes. All NPC neutral creeps now have push immunity for the first two minutes. So these changes will address specific unintentional behaviors from being leveraged 
too early on in the laning phase of the game for one team to get a high reward without reasonable counterplay or without an appropriate level of risk. These unintentional behaviors can still be used after the first two minutes. By that time, all players have more appropriate tools and levels available to them to have reasonable counterplay. These changes have no impact on regular gameplay. So basically, if you guys don't understand what this means, I'll try to explain it to you. So I casted the VPOG tournament. Uh, actually, I think that was maybe even two weeks ago now. It was a little while ago. And there was a strategy by one of the teams where they body blocked the creeps from leaving the base for the first couple of minutes at their at their tier three tower. So essentially what happened was they prevented, let's just say four or five creep waves from leaving the base. That means the opposing team can't get experience for those creeps as well as you can send a hero up to that lane that automatically gets experience because the enemy's creepway pushes into your tower for free. So it's slightly polarizing for the enemy. They can't get experience uh, in the same manner. And not only that, but then you get this enormous creep wave built over several creep spawns to try to push down the enemy's towers. It's uh, very hard to combat, pretty polarizing for the enemy. So this change really just um, stops that from being able to happen at least in the beginning of the game that way heroes can get levels they can be able to deal with this type of thing if it were to happen later on in the game um hold on one sec guys i'm gonna be doing a lot of talking here so i'm gonna need to stay hydrated so uh one thing i want to clarify with this so historically throughout the last several years we know that behemoth he's a hero that likes to block creeps at the uh, at the base prevent them from uh leaving for a certain amount of time there this should not prevent behemoth from blocking because it says here unit walking so this is very important unit walking means through units and a fissure is spawning a path of terrain that's blocking uh your pathway so there is a difference there at least from my understanding that a behemoth can still fissure block creeps at the base versus um, being able to stand there with minions or heroes and actually block the creeps from leaving the base so this is more to uh make make it so that these polarizing strategies can't be exploited all right so we'll i think we talked about that pretty well here this one's kind of big Neutral creeps. So we got four different neutral creeps here. These are the uh, hard camp creeps. Catman champion bonus mana regeneration per second granted to allies from the aura reduced from two to one. It's not a super big change. Often we don't really uh, command or take over a catman, but it does impact heroes like Ophelia and Parasite to some degree. Again, not the biggest change. Minotaur, attack speed bonus to allies from the aura reduced from 20 to 15. Again, I think this mostly impacts uh, Ophelia, who wants to take over a Minotaur, maybe even Parasite. Uh, it does slightly help those junglers that need to sit there and tank the camp, as this aura would give all the creeps in the camp when you farm stacks extra attack speed. We'll reduce a little bit of damage there. It's 5 attack speed to every uh, every neutral creep there a vagabond leader bonus health regeneration per second granted to allies from the aura reduced from five to four not the biggest change here but this one magic damage dealt from, by ground pound reduced from 170 to 150 in my opinion vagabond leader is the strongest of the uh, neutral creeps he has a very low cooldown i believe it's eight or ten seconds i think it's less than 10 on this ground pound spell dealing 170 aoe damage you can cast that i believe three times uh if i'm not wrong i believe it's three times so uh heroes like parasite really love the vagabond leader same with ophelia you take over the vagabond leader you can farm stacks over time by spamming out the ground pound uh this this creep is very good to whispering helm dominate it's easy for stacking jungle camps clearing them uh so this is a small nerf to the vagabond leader the aura is also uh very strong as well for a hero like legionnaire to whispering helm dominate get extra regen while you jungle five health regen is insane very very strong so that's down to four now still very very good 
but uh, just slightly weakened there. Vulture Lord. Armor bonus to allies from the aura reduced from 2 to 1. This is pretty big, actually. Um, it's 100%. Uh, reduced or 50% however you want to look at it it's cut in half here um, so again I think this impacts the farmers that want to take out those triple stack hard camps heroes like solstice legionnaire uh, this creep gives armor to the entire hard camp so it takes longer to kill those hard camps and now with the vulture lord giving one less armor it's going to make killing stacks as a jungler uh, or even um, a carry hero with his cleaver or other farming item it's going to take less attacks to or less time to kill those stacked hard camps so this is a pretty pretty significant one i think these last two more significant than the catman and the minotaur but uh it, it's going to be interesting to see how these changes to the hard camp creeps will impact any kind of jungling uh moving forward but these are pretty pretty significant changes at least in my opinion all right, mid wars here again. I don't usually like to cover mid wars. I'm just gonna skip this. It's it's just uh, stuff about the picking phase, so I'm gonna skip over that one. So again, this is this is for normal mode. We'll start here with heroes. Now we're gonna start with adrenaline. So shard blast. This is his Q spell. Mana cost changed from these numbers to these. So the level one costing less mana levels. 3 and 4 cost more mana, so you're going to have to use more mana as you level up Shard Blast. Bonus magic damage reduced. So the level 1 stays the same. It's still very strong, 80 magic damage as a level 1 nuke. That's fairly spammable, very strong. Level 2, 5, and then 10, and then 15 damage. So overall, he's losing at, at the max level 15 damage per Shard Blast. So Adrenaline was able to spam this spell pretty frequently. Uh, I believe how it works is if you hit multiple targets, it gets cooldown reduction. I don't play this hero, so I, I'm i actually not 100% sure about the mechanics of how he works, but he is very annoying to play against. I know that much. He, he does a lot of damage in a very quick amount of time. Cooldown reduced from 4 seconds to 3 seconds. Cooldown reduction for rush decreased from 1.5 seconds to 1 second per enemy hero hit. So the more heroes you hit with your Shard Blast, the quicker you reduce the cooldown on your second spell, I believe, which is called Rush. The old mechanic cooldown is reduced to 0.5 seconds and 60% of the mana cost is refunded. New, new mechanic cooldown is reduced by 0. Uh, 0. 0.75 seconds. Mana cost on the ability is reduced by 10, 15, 20, 25. So now you're reducing a flat amount of mana and not a percentage of the uh, mana cost of the spell. This should be, so if you're spending 110 mana, mana cost is reduced by 25. That is significantly less than 60%. So you're getting less mana back. This effect stacks up to two times and lasts for 10 seconds. Okay. But yeah, it should be, you should be getting your mana back less, less mana back. So that makes this a little easier to play against. Ember Shard. I believe this is the third ability. Second ability should be Rush. Where is Adrenaline? Ember Shard is the third ability. Okay, just wanted to double check that. Max pull distance reduced from 1,000 units to 800 units. Yeah, this was very strong. Uh, you're able to displace people pretty far. Regular distance at which the enemy unit stops from Adrenaline when traveling to him increased from 100 units to 150 units. Okay, so slight nerf there. Now his ultimate. So a lot of his skills are being touched here. Bonus strength per real hero caught reduced from four six eight to three four five. That's a that's a pretty sizable difference here. The more heroes you catch, the less uh, the more strength you would gain, but it's going to be less now per hero. Still two times the value for enemy heroes. Uh, so you also get strength per ally you catch. No longer gains two bonus attack damage per real hero trapped. So you don't get damage, you just get strength. And strength gives you damage anyway. So that's completely fine. So he'll be he'll be less tanky when he uses his ultimate there. And locks everybody down. Adrenaline Shard Blast was a little too explosive and lopsided when encountering multiple enemy heroes. Agreed. Improved to 
have too much downtime in team fights when not hitting two plus enemy heroes. Shard Blast is still intended to perform extremely well when fighting multiple heroes, so its bonus effects will be more fair, sustained, and consistent after these changes. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, again, I don't really play this hero too much, but I think all these nerfs to uh, some of his mechanics were pretty warranted. A lot of people were saying he's very frustrating to play against, um, and I think he was getting picked quite a lot. Um, in at least high TMM games that I was uh, playing in. So that'll conclude Adrenaline. Next is Artillery. So Artillery, I believe, is getting nerfs across the board. He's been sitting at a pretty high win rate. Uh, I believe the stats should still be here. Win per set. He is the highest win rate hero currently. So he, uh, he is pretty high on the list. LRM, this is his Q spell. Percentage of attack damage bonus on each LRM rocket changed. From these values to these. So his level 1 is the same. Levels 2, 3, and 4. Uh, they get drastically less as you level it up. So only 2% lower than 4% than 6%. So it scales. Uh, it's only going to be 22% at max versus the 28%. That's going to significantly reduce his uh, damage there on his LRM. Artillery is now sighted for one second if LRM hits an enemy unit instead of just player controlled enemy units. If you hit a neutral creep, the neutral creep's team will have sight of artillery. So this means if you're farming in your own jungle, um, they won't get sight of you. But if you're farming in their jungle, uh, they should get vision of you for one second. Based cast range reduced. I use the correct range increased from special ammunition. So his range, he got 100 cast range nerf there. I believe this is what it was supposed to be last batch. It was not... Uh, the correct value at least that's what that says there mortar shot same thing 100 cast range reduced homing missile this is the ultimate same thing 100 range reduced so all the spells got a 100 cast range reduction that will make uh his kill kill range slightly weaker prior to this patch these three abilities were still using the values prior to 4.9 despite the fact that they were intended to be reduced so this was actually not intended to be working that way so he was overperforming. Despite this, artillery's performance has been significantly higher than intended. So another small nerf was added on top of the intended cast range reduction. This should make his range less polarizing to deal with. Yeah. So basically, as it says there, his range was very polarizing. He can kill you from so far away. It's very hard to counterplay. Uh, this hero was just really, really nuts. Very high pick rate, very high ban rate. Uh, and as you could see, I showed you before, he has a, about a 60% win rate across the board through all brackets. So it's very, very strong hero. He's going to get some range nerfs there and some damage nerfs. Bloodhunter, Hemorrhage, this is his ultimate. And keep in mind, we just talked about his Staff of the Master radius on his ultimate got increased. So that's a small buff there. Now we see a buff to his ultimate here. Initial superior magic damage increased. So 50 level 1, 75 level 2, and 100 damage level 3. And also the damage, magic damage taken per unit traveled increased here. 5%, 5%, 5% across the board. So 5% more damage at all levels, 50, 75, and 100 damage. His ultimate is a lot stronger. Prior to this patch, the values in the tooltip were displayed as these values. This changed both correct the tooltips and buffs the ability slightly. So Bloodhunter, we don't see him too often. He's uh, kind of a niche pick. He's really good at um, countering heroes with a lot of mobility. So heroes like War Beast Blitz come to mind. There are definitely more than those, but those are the ones that I'm going to Use as an example. He's he's quite good against those types of heroes, but uh, we don't see him played a whole lot. This can uh, for sure increase his viability a little bit as he'll deal more damage, get those quills, uh, kills. The quicker he can get his kills, the, the uh, quicker he can heal up, and that's what makes him very uh, very threatening when he's able to sit in team fights and uh, deal lots of damage and heal up very quickly. Uh, that's when he becomes very powerful. So next is Calamity Funeral Pyre. That's his third ability, the passive. Agility gain state on self duration increased from 1.25 times to 1.5 times the original state duration. So you get the uh, you get the agility stats for longer duration. That's just going to help upkeep his damage. I believe, if I remember correctly, that gives you movement speed as well. Heroes have one of all stats and three movement speed. Okay, so this is just specifically talking about the agility though. Agility gain state. Okay. Cersei, Doppelganger. This is his second spell, his copy mechanic, uh, spawning illusions, mana cost changed 
from this to this. So I always thought that this was weird throughout the course of Han's history. The spell at level 1 was very mediocre. It costs a lot of mana. It doesn't last uh, as long duration. So very weak illusion early game. And it as you leveled it, it would cost less. And, and it would be lasting longer. It kind of made less sense. Because you would think the stronger the illusion becomes or the longer it lasts, the more mana it would be worth at. So this kind of remedies that fix. Now this will mean that he will use less mana in the early game, but as you level this spell, which you definitely will want to level this, um, it will cost you more mana. So you will need mana items, of course, as always, to be able to spam this. Items like Mana Ring are pretty good, I would say. Any kind of regen. Items like Jade Spire to help out your ultimate cast range. Stuff like that I think will will still be the same for Cersei. I don't think this really changes her playstyle too much or anything like that. Just a little bit more mana investment on the illusion spamming. But uh, this is what makes Cersei really strong. She's able to spam illusions, be really disruptive. Just just be so annoying to, uh, to the enemy team. Very powerful hero if played uh, very well. This spell, uh, seeing a little bit of a change there in mana cost. Cthulhuphon. Obliterate. This is his second spell. Using this ability will no longer interrupt your Q order. That's pretty cool. So basically, you can uh, you can cast this uh, and not like mess up your trample or your ultimate. Nice little nice little change there. Not too much to really add to that. Maddening Revenge. This is the third spell, the passive. Attackers now also have minus 30 40 50 60 percent healing received for 0 0.1 seconds upon attacking cthulhu font so this works i believe this works on neutral creeps as well or lane creeps they should they don't really have much healing anyway so that's not really maybe if you're farming a uh, vagabond leader hard camp this this has some kind of impact here but uh, this really works well in conjunction with the ultimate when you're fighting enemy heroes, mostly. Receiving damage from Cthulhu Font's front will grant Cthulhu Font 5, 10, 15, 20 health regeneration per second for 2 seconds. Huh. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. He gets some health regen, but only for 2 seconds. So it's a little minor health regen to make him uh, a little more durable. Uh, this could incentivize getting uh, points in his aura his third spell here uh earlier on in the game because typically you would want to max out trample and obliterate together uh the ultimate you don't really skill till maybe level 10 or 11. you would sometimes get this spell level eight or level nine excuse me but before that wasn't really too valuable the health regeneration effect and return damage not only have 0 0.33 times effectiveness on cthulhu font's illusions okay that's a good change Although Cthulhu Font is in a generally good state, Maddening Re Revenge does not really have much going for the ability at the moment. Yep, that's a fair point. Granting Cthulhu Font slightly more durability and preventing regular lifesteal from being a hard counter to this ability will allow this ability to be more worth leveling during the game. Okay, seems seems fine to me. Deadlift, Onslaught. This is his second spell, I believe, the one that forces creeps to... Where's Deadlift? Here he is. To attack stuff, onslaught, target enemy unit to structure or structure to run to them and apply 50% movement speed slow. Yep, okay. Cast type or cast effect type change from magic to physical. Oh, so that means you can cast this while people have magic immunity. That's a pretty nice change. I don't think this, uh, yeah, okay, that, yeah, that's a good change. Devour, starting armor increased from 1.16 to 2. Uh, this is actually a really nice change. Uh, I think in the early game, Devour is really weak. And uh, a lot of the times, he's kind of forced to be more of this roamer rather than... Uh, way back in the day, we used to see a lot of Devour in middle. I, I think in this current meta, Devour middle is just too weak. He can't really contest his lane. I think giving him a little extra armor really helps him out. We could perhaps see some more Devour in middle, but he might still have the same challenges to overcome as a core hero. Uh, might just still be more suitable to that position 3 or 4 in long lane uh, or as a roamer, which I think he's really, really good at. But uh, this little extra armor in the start uh, definitely helps him to uh, man up and 
fight the uh, the opponent on top of them with that rock. So really good. I like that change. Very simple, yet very uh, very nice little small change there. Okay, this one's pretty big. Um, and before we talk about it, I, I honestly have no clue how this is going to work out. I'm going to have to test this for myself. Draconis getting a big change here to his uh, how his farming works with his uh, passive. But I will read through all the changes here. Again, I'm not going to go into this super, super much in detail because I have to see how this works for myself. Fiery Barrage. This is his third spell, his fire. Uh, Dragon Flame, which is his Q spell, now only spreads the flames once from a blaze instead of spreading it four times. Base magic damage per four seconds increased from 5, 10, 15, 20 to 20. Damage rate increased per charge reduced from 100% to 70%. Max charges reduced from 8 to 5, 6, 7, 8. Damage multiplier against heroes increased from this to this. So the early game numbers went up. The level 4 stayed the same. Yep. Okay. Draconis has the ability to take camps using the unique mechanics of Fiery Barrage where you damage different enemies to maximize damage by spreading the fire. Yep. So that's how it works without taking, without taking damage. That's the big part is he does this without taking damage. However, it was too easy to quickly reach the max potential damage of Fiery Barrage against stacked neutral camps by using Dragon Flame. So basically, if you guys don't understand, uh, you have a triple stacked hard camp or any camp, it could be even Ancients, you use your Q spell, the Q spell immediately spreads the passive, the, the E spell to all of the camps and everything just starts to die very quickly. So these changes should slow down Draconis' damage rate against large stacks of neutral creeps with a lower level of Fiery Barrage for his level 1 to 4 jungling from auto attacks while simultaneously ensuring that one dragon flame does not nearly wipe out an entire camp. Overall, jungling should be better for the average player early, early on, while the damage output against stacks should be slower when Draconis is levels 3 to 6. Okay, so again, I'm going to have to test this for myself, see how this uh, change, how, how, how this affects the hero. But the idea here is he was farming way too fast, he wasn't taking damage while doing so. And uh, he was reaching peak levels uh, faster than than the hero should. We saw in the VPOG tournament uh, strategy where you stack the entire jungle for him. And he gets like 600 GPM by like 3 minutes into the game, 4 minutes into the game. He's like level 9 at 4.5 minutes. It's just extremely polarizing for the enemy hero to deal with. Because uh, this hero is, is just explosive in terms of uh, how he functions. So anyway, that's enough about Draconis. Drunken Master, Stagger. Using Lunge now resets the cooldown of Stagger instead of reducing the cooldown to 0 0.8 seconds. So I believe it used to work like this for a while ago. Uh, you would Lunge in, then you would Stagger. The use of your Stagger would reset the Lunge, then you can Lunge again. So that's a, that's a fairly decent buff there to uh, Drunken Master. Drink now instantly grants 3, 6, 9, 12 drink charges upon starting the channel. Okay, three point strike, strike point reset delay increased from eight to 12 seconds. Just a few more quality of life changes to Drunken Master to improve his combat flow in accordance with his drink usage. Okay, so Drunken Master getting some buffs there. Uh, I don't play this hero too much um, ever since he's uh, been changed from the old Drunken Master. Never really appealed to me too much, but uh, let's see here what his win rate is. I think he's fairly low on the win rate. He is the fifth lowest win rate hero. So he's not performing very well right now. Why am I looking at replays? Sorry, guys. Uh, so he gets some buffs across the board. Hopefully this will help out his uh, his performances. Empath. Essence Link. This is the Q spell. Tether break range increased from 100 to 200. State on Empath or the target ally hero if used while Aswan is active is no longer considered a buff and thus can no longer be dispelled. That's a pretty big change. So the tether the tether break range, um, excuse me, they they need to, the, the range for that in order to break is longer now. So a lot of the times people would use essence link and they would break the link way too early and it, they wouldn't get any damage out. So this, this will help you uh, keep the link a little longer and then you need to have more, more distance to, to break the range. This one's pretty big though. You are inside your teammate with your ultimate and you have link on them. This the link can no longer be dispelled. That's that's a pretty big change because that will guarantee that they get to get healed up. 
This ensures that Essence Link does not get dispelled if S1 is used or after Essence Link is cast. Note that the debuff on the enemy hero can still be dispelled, which will cancel Essence Link on Empath. Oh, okay, so you can still debuff uh, the enemy or the guy who's getting the Essence Link on him. Uh, the enemy, that is, which will cancel Essence Link on Empath or her host from S1. Okay, pretty cool. Those are just some, some small changes there to how the interaction works. Engineer. Okay, so engineer. We before this last patch, engineer was like super god tier. His mines were were crazy. He was uh, he was picked up in every single tournament or banned. Hero was nuts. Um, but we he's fallen off since the last set of nerfs. So here he's getting a buff to his keg. Magic damage increased from these numbers to these. So his level two, three, and four, all getting buffed. Three, uh, 30 extra damage here on the level three or level four, excuse me. He gets 300 damage, uh, and he's also getting a stun duration increase here. The big one is the level four, 0.3 seconds, kind of gradual, so not not super big in the early levels, but 300 damage on a 2.5 second stun in AOE, very very nice here for engineer. That's going to help his uh, his kill potential in laning phase uh, with another lane partner, as we typically see engineer with like. Uh, a strength hero with a setup stun to land the keg. Very nice. This will uh, definitely, I think, increase the play rate here of Engineer. Very, very fun hero. Still has very, very good spells. Uh, he was just kind of lacking damage, sort of uh, falling off there in the last patch. Also want to check his uh, win rate if possible. Don't think he... Maybe, maybe he's still doing pretty well. Where is Engineer? Did I miss him? Here he is, 99. 47%. It's not too bad, but definitely he fell pretty far to where he was before. All right, next up is Fade, Shadow Walk. This is the E spell. Now properly acts as a disjoint upon activation. So to my understanding, this spell, there, there were lots of spells where you would cast your shadow walk and you would still not disjoint the spell an ability that comes to mind was voodoo jester's acid cocktail uh because it's a throw thrown projectile that chases after you so in my opinion what should happen is you cast shadow walk while that's being thrown at you you disjoint the stun but what would happen is you would still get stunned even though you became in this uh state so to my understanding, this should now fix any kind of projectile being thrown at you being able to be disjointed. So even something like a hammer stun throw, uh, something that stuns you directly, if you shadow walk during the cast, it should properly disjoint that. Um, that's, that's a pretty big buff for Fade. And uh, that makes Fade, I think, a more viable suicide option uh, as like a roamer. Uh, because if she lands against the right types of heroes, she can get one point in her shadow walk, and it becomes very difficult to kill her, because uh, she also has a stun. So, very, very nice buff to Fade, and I think that could definitely increase uh, Fade's viability. Very, very fun hero uh, as well. Flint Beastwood. So this hero's been uh, kind of up there with Artillery in the frustrating to play against kind of category. Hollow Point Shells. This is his W or passive first passive uh, ability bonus physical damage reduced here to these values so four six eight no four yeah four six eight ten so across the board nerfs stun duration reduced doesn't stun at level one so you need level two hollow point shells to do a mini stun and it's the old level one level three is the old level two and level four is the old level three not only procs against enemy units, no longer procs against wards or ally units. So yeah, Flint's hollow point shells used to like one or two shot wards of sight, which in my opinion never made any sense. I, I have no idea why that mechanic worked like that. Um, because any hero needs, what, four auto attacks to kill a ward? Something like that. So th this was, in my opinion, kind of stupid. But that should fix that mechanic now. Money shot cooldown changed from 20, 15, 10 seconds to 20 seconds. Th this spell on a 10 second cooldown is ridiculous. I mean, it does like, I think it's like 650 damage uh, to one guy. Where is Flint Beastwood? He, right here. 
700 damage. Oh my god. This this spell 700 damage on a 10 second cooldown last patch. Like this was nuts. Uh <laughs> Imagine you're playing carry and you're like a forsaken archer with 1500 HP and you get money shot once you half your HP is gone You literally have to go back life steal and come back because 10 seconds later He can do that to you again. Like that's just ridiculous um, So this is a really good change 20 seconds is a, a lot more counterplay 10 seconds was just insane makes uh, that made no sense to me Really good changes. Uh, Flint's still really strong. He has True Strike on E. Uh, still has lots of burst damage in lane. Lots of range. So he's still going to be pretty strong. But these uh, will make less. Th this will make less frustration. Less damage. You'll need level two of Hollow Point shells for that mini stun, etc. Golden Veil. Next hero here. Dagger Dance. This is the Q spell. Now deals uh, this magic damage every 0.25 seconds to targets other than the main target within the area area of effect. Okay, so this adds uh, extra damage, I think, to how his Dagger Dance works. Perch and Plunge. This is his tree jumping ability. While perching on a tree, cooldown is set to 6 seconds if the perch tree is destroyed. Uh, I don't know what it was previously. Again, this is a hero I don't really play too much. I, I honestly... For my personal taste, I hate the design of this hero. He's very frustrating to play against. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the cooldown was before, but what this means is, if you're able to chop the tree down that he's on, you you have lots of counterplay now. So you're you're rewarded for chopping the right tree. So that's uh, that's nice. Icor, Life Leech. This is, I believe, his Q spell. Life Leech's state application now occurs before the magic damage takes place. This allows the magic damage dealt by this ability to trigger from the Life Leech state, allowing Icor to gain a small amount of healing when Life Leech's projectile hits an enemy. Really small change here. Uh, I, I don't think this makes Icor uh, that much better of a hero. I, I could be wrong about that, but I, I just don't think this hero... Um, does enough if that makes sense. I think the hero is very niche. Uh, the times I really think the hero is good is when he's maybe against like a Lord Self Forest because he can transfer that that large debuff from your carry to yourself, and then you get reduction from your E spell. But other than that, I really don't like Icor as a hero personally. Um, I think this is more of a niche hero, but this this change will help him a little bit. I don't think it makes him super viable. Keeper of the Forest, Nature's Guidance, this is his Q spell. Stealth state on Keeper of the Forest will not be dispelled if Nature's Guidance is cast while near trees. So what this means is uh, you use your Nature's Guidance on yourself, you're invisible, you wait the cooldown, which I believe is 10 seconds, something like that. You can put Nature's Guidance on a teammate, but you don't break the stealth from yourself. This is pretty nice. Uh, if you have lots of patience and you're looking to do, set up a gank with teammates, uh, pretty nice. You can invis a lot of people without breaking your own invis. And keep in mind, when you're invis and you come out of that invis, you get the root, not your teammates. So that's very nice, in my opinion. All right, next up is Clanks. Bang, this is his Q spell. State duration for enemies facing the flash increased from 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds. So Clanks got some nerfs last patch. Uh, I believe this used to slow for 3 seconds, and it got nerfed to 1.5. Haven't really seen Clanks played a whole lot. I just think uh, he kind of fell off the meta a bit. But uh, this will help his ability to chase people down a little bit better. Gives him a little extra slow back, because uh, it got reduced pretty pretty hard. Lackey, this is his E spell. Shots now deal 0.33 times damage in a 300 radius to enemies around, but excluding the main target. So this will help his farming speed quite a lot. This will help his damage output. Uh, it'll help him wave clear a little bit better. It's not the craziest change, but it will it will help his farming speed, and it will help his uh, damage output slightly in team fights if his lackey's bouncing around in the fights. So nice, nice, nice change for him. I don't think it's like crazy, crazy change, but it's uh. It's something, and it's uh, it's worth mentioning there. It's a nice change. Kraken. Release the Kraken. That's his ultimate. Now constantly applies restraint to enemies within radius. 
that's pretty good. That's a that's a nice buff to Kraken's ultimate. So you're gonna get that restraint effect uh, throughout the duration of that Kraken ult. That's that's really good, really good buff there to Kraken. I already think Kraken's a pretty good, pretty strong hero, underplayed, very viable. Um, that's that's a nice buff there to his ultimate. Ophelia, Nature's Wrath, cast range increased from 600 to 700. So this was nerfed last patch, I believe, from 800 to 600. Pretty big nerf. Um, now it's now it's got that middle ground of 700. So she'll have a little bit more catch range once again, but not as much as she once had. Um, this will make leveling Nature's Wrath uh, viable again, in my opinion. Because uh, when it was 800, it was definitely 100% get Nature's Wrath level 2, level 3 possibly even max that out the judgment is good as well but in my opinion this was better once it got nerfed to 600 it was more of a 50 50 if you wanted that extra damage amplification level this up if not just go with the ophelia's judgment now i would say with 700 range once again i would say that is good enough to to this is more valuable in the early game over judgment so i would i would definitely get this spell Command, movement speed bonus for creeps reduced to 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, so level one is actually stronger. Two is the same. Three and four is weaker. Max bonus health reduced. Okay, so the, the creeps you command are going to have less HP overall, all across the board. Creeps control command now have a minimum base health of 900 so what this means is actually i'll just go ahead and read this first because I, I think it explains what i'm going to say combined with the neutral creep changes in this patch these changes should slightly reduce ophelia's performance later in the game without destroying the hero's performance and unique tempo control during the early game these changes also allow ophelia to have other targets or command as the game progresses without sacrificing much durability on them so yeah so this second point here what this means is you can take over key units like let's let's say medium camp spawns such as wolf commander uh ice ogre uh fro fro whatever he's called frost ogre i think he's called ice ogre the one that gives the frost armor effect that that thing is actually really strong uh there's the alchemist ogre that has the transmute effect which basically is alchemist bones on a creep uh then you have like the werebeast enchanter which has the aoe reveal there's so many creeps that you can command with ophelia and they'll have this uh, base 900 plus 120. They'll have 1,020 health. That, this is really cool, honestly. This this is going to promote uh, Ophelia players to not always want to, or not always have to feel forced to take Skeleton Kings, Minotaurs. You get the idea, the hard camp creeps. Uh, this is really nice because those those creeps, the Wolf Commander, those are really nice auras in mid and late game to, to give to your team. Those, uh, those, those auras can be very impactful. I really like this change. Uh, it's something the hero has never seen before, so that's that's really cool. Um, so she got some nerfs in some areas, and she got some buffs back in some other forms. Like it a lot. Okay, Pandemonium. This one's really cool. Flurry, this is the Q spell when you punch your target in a direction, now destroys trees within its affected area. Man, that is super cool. So basically... Uh, the way Panda would work is, uh, you're, let's just, I'll, I'll draw you guys a picture. So we're chasing some guy, right? We, we, we start with our flick or our cannonball. We catch the guy, we, we stun him and then we start to flurry him. And what would happen is you get on a tree line and you start punching past the guy and it's, it's, it's really frustrating. You're like, oh my God, I'm not punching him anymore. The, the trees are screwing me up. Now he's going to destroy trees. You're going to be able to keep punching people forward. Super, super nice quality of life change for Panda here. Uh, screw, uh, messes up with uh, juking paths and stuff like that. This is really cool. I love this change. Second spell here, Flick. Now deals 20 physical damage to the target upon landing near them. Delay for flicking. After landing near the target, reduced from 0 0.4 seconds to 0 0.3 seconds. 3.0.35 seconds. Pandemonium is no longer stunned for a full 0.5 seconds before actually flicking the target backwards. Instead, the stun duration on Pandemonium for his flick animation now matches the delay time for flicking 0.35 seconds. So you deal damage with your flick. That prevents stuff like portal keys. 
uh, from breaking the interaction there. You have less delay time. Nice, nice buffs to flick. So, so far he's getting buffs across the board here. Face smash. This is his ultimate. Pandemonium now faces the target after every attack. This ensures that Pandemonium faces the target consistently if for some reason the target or Pandemonium are displaced without breaking the channel. All right, pretty cool. Sorry, guys, one sec. All right. Some simple quality of life changes were made to Pandemonium, making it feel more responsive for the player playing the hero. Pandemonium's flurry now has more consistent behavior while near a tree line, and he can act a little sooner out of the flick animation. Small damage addition to flick makes it a more reliable tool to put an enemy's portal key on cooldown and dispel it an enemy's health potion, etc. Yeah, so these are buffs across the board to Panda. Uh, the biggest issue with Panda, he's kind of similar to Prisoner. All his spells are physical. He's super hard countered by Void Talisman. Um, there's there's just lots of counterplay. Uh, even the, the face smash, the ultimate, um, it's very easy to interrupt that. So just there's so much counterplay to a hero like Pandemonium. These, these quality of life changes are really nice to help up his uh, performance. All right, next up is Parasite Infest. That's his W spell, second spell. It's experience and gold granted to Parasite when the infested creep dies is now a static 125 experience and 75 gold, rather than the values based off of the infested creep. This will always happen regardless of how the infested creep dies. So this is pretty big, actually. Uh, as you guys know, all neutral creeps give different gold and XP values. Now, no matter what you infest, you're going to get 125 experience in gold. Uh, 75 gold. So you can have blocked hard camps. You can uh, infest small camp creeps, medium camp creeps. You're going to get this experience and this amount of gold no matter what. These values are the highest among the strongest units in the hard neutral camp. If an enemy player has damaged the creep within the last 10 seconds, the enemy team also will receive the static amount of experience in gold split evenly among each enemy player. So this one here is really big. So a, a big reason to why Parasite was very weak in the last patch or so was the fact that it was very... It was very harmful for you to set up ganks because if your creep got damaged and you jumped out of the creep or it got destroyed, you wouldn't get any experience in gold uh, and the opponent would get all of it. Uh, so that was really frustrating to, to deal with as a parasite, which basically uh, kind of enforced you to stay farming in the jungle. And throughout the history of this hero, he's always been perceived as this aggressive jungler. You always want to be fighting with those neutral creeps, so it's kind of counterproductive. But now, with the change, you will always get the XP in gold. But if they do damage it, they will also split uh, the same value with their team. So it rewards both teams. Uh, you don't get punished for having your creep damaged. That's really big. These changes ensure that the behavior of the death of the infested creep is consistent for both Parasite and his opponents, while also making a failed gank much less punishing for Parasite. Boom! There you go. These changes prevent Parasite from completely denying his opponents of experience in gold. Exactly, because that was also frustrating. Uh, you would sit there, dump all your spells on a 900, 1000 HP creep, and then Parasite's like, hey, I jump out, you get nothing. That's why that was implemented in the first place, but it proved to be too detrimental for Parasite himself, while also preventing his opponents from denying Parasite experience in gold if they kill the creep. Very good. So now it's less fr frustrating for both sides. Plague Rider. Base strength increased from 18 to 19. Base intelligence increased from 18 to 20. Extinguish. This is his third spell. Cooldown reduced from 60, 50, 40, 30 seconds to 45, 40, 35, 30 seconds. So this is pretty big. 15 second cooldown reduction at level 1. 10, 5 more, and then the same at level 4. So this one this is the big one here at least for me this this is what makes plague rider viable as a suicide hero or a long lane hero with another lane partner you just full deny from the enemy team's carry it's really frustrating to play carry against the plague rider uh because he just 
remove so much of your golden XP. And this will make it uh, more frequent. That's going to buff up the Plague Rider's uh, deny rate. Plague Carrier. Cooldown reduction reduced from 140, 160 to 180, 60. Whoa! That's a big one. Okay, 40 seconds level 1. That's huge. So a lot of the times uh, you want to ulti the triple ancients and then you have to wait two and a half minutes almost for your ulti to come back up, which more or less makes this hero feel kind of useless in early game. Now with a 100 second cooldown on ultimate, uh, it's a lot less punishing to ulti a triple ancient camp, which gives you quite a lot of experience early game. And then you will have your ultimate uh, 40 second, almost a full minute faster. So 40 seconds faster uh, at the level 1. Level 2 also, only 80 seconds. That's pretty pretty nice. This will up Plague Rider's viability, in my opinion, quite a lot. He will be a very disruptive hero for the enemy's carry, uh, while also still being able to maintain his own progression. So I like that a lot. Plague Rider has been uh, fairly weak for quite a while. This will This will make him much stronger. Puppet Master. Puppeteer's Hole. This is the Q spell. Duration increased. Uh, these numbers are extremely minimal. Not really not really too much going on here. This is like 0.1 of a second to all abilities, uh, to all levels here. Voodoo Puppet. 10 second, 10 second, 10 second. Okay, 10 second. These are just some quality of life changes. These aren't going to change really anything of how the hero functions and whatnot. Um... He got a lot of nerfs, I think, last patch uh, to his ultimate and his whiplash, if I'm not mistaken. So these are just very, very tiny buffs. Not not really going to change anything. Chi. Crippling puncture. Movement speed tapering. Midpoint shifted from 15% to 50%. This is a small buff as the tapering mechanic starts later in the slow duration. Okay. Ancestral Assault. This is the ultimate. Initial delay reduced 0.4 seconds. Number of instances changed from 1, 2, 3 to 3. Spirit Magic Damage reduced. Okay. So he's doing 150 here versus 125 level 1. Then he's doing 180. No, 270, sorry, versus 250, and then 390 versus 375. So this is a buff, I think, across the board. Trigger damage from enlightenment caused by ancestral assault. Uh, deals one-time damage. I think that's a buff as well. Disarmament per perplex duration change from one... Alright, so this is a nerf to levels 1 and 2 on the Disarmament Perplex. Now also applies to 20% movement speed slow. Alright, these changes should smooth out Ancestral Assault and make his performance more appropriate at each phase of the game without making it feel bad in the early. Okay, so there you go. Buffs in early game without uh, without making it too too much to deal with there. Chi, Chi's been, I think, underperforming, so these are some buffs across the board to Chi. This is another hero I don't really play too much of, but... Just looking at the number values, this should uh, help him out a bit. Okay, Rampage. Stampede, that's our charge ability, Q spell. Movement speed bonus now lingers for one second after hitting the target. Okay, so you impact them with Stampede. You keep moving for one second. Pretty cool. Small buff there. Horn Strike, while moving, cooldown is reduced at the rate of movement speed divided by... 1,000 seconds. What? Cooldown is reduced. So the uh, the farther you move per second, the quicker this comes back up. At least that's how I understand it. Alright, so you want to keep moving with Rampage. What does this say? Rampage's kit now plays more towards having higher movement speed and encourages Rampage. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. That makes sense. You want to keep moving, this will come up faster and you'll keep horning people. Sounds fun. The more you move, the more you horn. The chains that binds. This is the ultimate. Physical damage dealt increased. Oh, 10%. Okay, cool. His ultimate got buffed by 10% damage uh, 
10% of the distance traveled in damage. Hopefully I explained that right. That's just reading numbers. 10% more. That's 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 a bit. That's good. Definitely impacts uh, level 1 a lot. Okay. Moving on to Riptide. Perfect Storm. That's the ultimate. Cooldown reduced. 30, then 15. 30 seconds at level 1, then 15. Okay. 160 is pretty long. Uh, I don't even know if people would skill this early game. I think it was uh, not worth leveling. I think you would pretty much wait till somewhere between 8 and 10 to get this spell. Maybe more like 10 and 11. Because uh, you kind of you need the damage output to really make this worth it. If I'm not mistaken, you get movement speed and whatnot from this. Where is Riptide? So you would get bonus movement speed, 20, 30, 40 per level, but the big one there is the bonus damage equal to the percentage of your agility. So in order for this to really be worth it, you you need to have enough damage. Uh, so a lot of the times you would skip that till later. This makes the level 1 a lot more enticing, but I think you're still skipping that for quite a while. Just a small buff there. Shadow Blade. Oh boy, Shadow Blade. Oof, this hero, he's been banned this hero every game. I, I don't want to ever see this hero in my game. Uh, he's just so cancerous to lane against with that stun on his uh, E spell. Alright, we're going to go over Shadow Blade here. Uh, th this, this should fix some of his frustration points that we were seeing in last patch. Base, Strength, Agility, and Intelligence reduced by 3. Strength, Agility, and Intelligence, growth per level increased from 1.8 to 2. So he's getting some stat adjustments here. Starting damage reduced by 8. 8 and 8. Alright, so here we go. This is the third ability, the frustration I was talking about. Soul Sight, mana cost increase. So we got 5, 10, 15, 20 mana cost increase per level, or by each level there. When Soul Sight is active, mana cost is increased. This is done to compensate for the extra mana you get from intelligence form okay so if you don't wait for the form to end early uh, aka going back into main form you're going to spend more mana but that's because you get bonus intelligence while using the form so that's what that means stun duration reduced from 2.5.6.7.8 so this level 4 stun is weaker than the level 1 stun that 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 enough or that alone should tell you how strong that this stun was being up to a 1.2 second stun. Magic damage dealt on initial proc reduced. So damage reduced across the board. Now procs, it's one time bonus on hit effect when attacking an enemy unit, as opposed to just enemy heroes. So what this used to do, which was why it was really annoying, is you'd use your soul sight and then it would only stun if you attacked a hero. It would not stun creeps. So you can stun a hero when it was almost the cooldown was almost over, use it again and stun again. That was really, really frustrating. On top of dealing a lot of damage and a pretty, pretty sizable stun duration, you can no longer do that. Your first attack, if you hit a creep, will uh, will make that stun effect go away. One time bonus on hit effect now expires after five seconds if it is not used. So this is great. It gives counterplay to the opponent to avoid getting stunned by the soul sight. I love that. Essence Shift. This is the ultimate here. When strength is your main attribute, max health loss per point of bonus strength granted by this ability reduced from 3 to 2.5 to 1.5. Okay. So, a buff to his strength form. Shadowblade has been liked mostly as a carry that can choose and gain their main attribute build throughout the game, rather than just the Jack of All Traits hero. These changes will change his stats to be more suitable for the carry role. These changes will also reduce the extremes of his current frustration. Soul Sight first hit effect from the previous patch. These changes to essence shift should make Shadow Blades <clears throat> strength build more viable in the mid and late game without contributing to the frustration of him being unkillable in the early game. Soul Sight will still have its uses as it was the most largely, largely neglected form. Agreed. But prior to last patch, this, this form was the weakest of the three. In the end, all three forms should be viable depending on the game and route you want to go with as a, uh, with as shadow blade okay all right next shell shock 
Rolling Thunder removed 0.3 second delay from initial activation. Delay after actually launching second activation increased from 0.1 seconds to 0.2 seconds. Uh, hmm. All right, I trying to understand how this. So basically, the second, like you, you click to roll on somebody, then you have a 0.3 second window. You can't roll immediately, so you don't uh, trigger that too early. Thank you for the host, by the way. Welcome everyone. We're doing patch analysis here for the new patch. Uh, now it just uh, limp, uh, reduces the or increases the delay from when you can use the second uh the the launch okay not not super big change there soul stealer okay this is pretty cool here soul stealer so his dread this is his third ability his passive armor penalty for enemies increased to three four five six so he gets one extra armor pen or armor reduction however you want to look at that that's going to increase his damage output uh by one extra armor's worth now also passively grants soul stealer 0.51 1.52 magic armor penetration holy cow that is so that is so good for soul stealer he does a lot of magic damage by the way he's got three demon hands in his ultimate which is aoe uh that is that's a huge buff uh to, to soul stealer this is uh this is a hero honestly that's not been super viable for a while he's just been kind of weak for the meta but uh man this this really makes fighting soul stealer a lot harder he's going to deal a lot more damage and uh, that will kind of remedy remedy his uh, low mobility and squishiness. So if he gets that farm early game, he's going to be a lot more threatening. Can now toggle the aura on and off with the extra ability one hockey default hockey D. So you can turn off your dread so the opponent does not see your aura and know that you are nearby. That's huge. That's a huge buff to being able to set up ganks, hide in fog of war, etc. This hockey change does override the short demon hand cast hockey. However, most players use the primary ability one hockey default hockey Q to cast the short range demon hand. All right, might have to change up some of your hockeys depending on what you use, but that's that's pretty cool. Swift blade, swift slashes. This is the ultimate. Now sights and reveals the main target for 0.2 seconds when this ability is fully casted. So sometimes you would lose vision when you swift slash and you would only get like a couple slashes off this will kind of fix that weird interaction that sometimes happens you get to sight and reveal them for 0.2 seconds it's not very long but it could be the difference in you getting a kill sometimes getting that extra slash or two in so pretty cool change there not too much really to add war beast metamorphosis while active max movement speed for your own units reduced uh, level 2 is 25% less, and level 3 is 50 less. So Warbeast was running around 650 movement speed level 3, which was pretty nuts. Uh, it was a nice buff that he got, but uh, I think he was... He... Where's the win rates? He's, he's, he was in the top 5 or 10 last time I looked. He's at 12 now. He's been pretty high in the win rate the last patch. This is just going to re remove some of his mobility. But uh, it's still an overall buff from two patches ago because he was 550 at all levels. So this is still a buff. Uh, it, it's a nerf from last patch, but it's a buff to two, from two patches ago. All right, we're done with Hero Bounce. Time to start talking about some items. Uh, so these are armor items, changes to armor items. We have Ring of the Teacher here. I'm going to kind of go through some of these fast. They're... I think they're pretty straightforward stuff. Basically, I think we're t we're removing a lot of armor from the game, a lot of uh, team armor, and promoting more self armor. Armor bonus for self increased from one to two. Armor bonus to allies from the aura reduced from two to one. Mana regeneration bonus from the aura increased from 0 0.65 to 0 0.8. This is going to make Ring of the Teacher slightly more appealing for laning phase, uh, giving more mana regen. It's still always been very good for pushing towers early game, but uh, it will give less armor to uh, aura, but more armor to self. <clears throat> Same here with Abyssal Skull. Passively grants two armor to self. Aura down from 5 to 
mana regen from 0.8 to 1. The Abyssal Skull getting a slightly nerf there overall. Gnome's Wisdom, 2 armor to self. Uh, bonus to allies from the aura reduced from 2 to 1. Mana regen from 1 to 1.2. Plated Greaves, armor granted to allies from the active state reduced from 1.5 to 1. Movement speed bonus reduced. So some movement speed reduction there from Plated Greaves. Soul's Bulwark, armor bonus to allies from the ally aura reduced from 3 to 2. So armor items have had too far uh, have had far too much benefit for allies at such a low cost. The aura effects of these items were generally made weaker so that physical damage is not countered so easily and quicker quickly for an entire team in the early phases of the game. So across the board, we're getting armor item nerfs. It's going to make uh, life a lot easier for hard carries. Changes to the mana battery line of items. Okay, so this was a change that a lot of people were not liking last patch. Uh, we added, or mana battery I think got added back into the game. Power supply uh, got, a, uh, got removed. Now power supply is back in the game. So mana battery costs 200. You can still buy it at the outpost and purchase in the relic shop and outpost. Okay. And power supply is back in the game, but you need mana battery. It, it, it used to cost 300 two patches ago. Now it costs 540. So you need the mana battery, a minor, two minor totems, and a 240 gold recipe. No longer a crushing claw or a duck boot or mark of the novice type of thing. So a little bit more expensive, but you can upgrade it into sacrificial stone. So this passively grants 3 Strength, Agility, and Intelligence. You get 15 charges, just like before. No longer purchasable in the Outpost. The other effects are the same as Mana Battery. Okay, Sacrificial Stone. So due to Power Supply coming back into the game as uh, an upgrade to Mana Battery once again, Sacrificial Stone had its gold increased, uh, gold cost in total. And now the stats go from 5 to 8. Gets a nice buff here to the healing, so uh, heroes with healing are going to definitely want to look to pick up a Sacrificial Stone. So 1500 gold is still a pretty good investment uh, for heroes with lots of healing. So from 15 to 20%. And now it costs 1500 instead of the 850 total. So almost double the cost, but still uh, you're getting stat bonuses and healing bonuses. It's a pretty nice item overall. Mana Battery and Power Supply both fulfilled unique benefits and had solid reasons to be picked up in the early game at their specific price point, so they were both largely reverted back to their legacy states. Sacrificial Stone would be too stat efficient if its recipe cost was not adjusted, though we still want the item to have a solid reason to be picked up. Therefore, it is now one of the most stat efficient items to, be, to pick up, and upgrades from a fantastic item at a moderate but relatively affordable cost. It also buffs healing output even more as its particular niche effect. Awesome! So I think these items are great, we're going to see them a lot. Frost Wolf Skull. Movement speed slow when used by a melee hero increased from 35 to 40%. Okay, this is pretty good. I I like the fact that this item got increased slow effect because it was uh, fairly weak in comparison to Dawnbringer. Scouting activation radius increased from 5,000 to 7,000. Scouting activation cooldown reduced from 30 to 24. This is getting buffs across the board. Dire Frost Wolf activation cooldown reduced from 50 to 40 seconds, so more frequent uh, use of the wolves there. Dire Frost Wolf activation, in addition to its current effects, also applies a one-second root on impact. Whoa, that's that's pretty cool. I believe you send out two of those wolves if I'm not wrong, or hmm, is it one or two items? Frost Wolf skull. Activate to spawn two scouting frost wolves. Okay, that means you can root two people. That's uh, pretty cool. It's a nice disable. I have no idea if that works through Shunken Head or not. I'm going to... Hmm, it's an item. I, I, I want to say it does. Usually root effects... Hmm, maybe, and then you can Shunken it off, I think. Depends on uh, the order. That's going to be something I need to test. But I think that that works through Magic Immunity, and Magic Immunity will remove it as well. That's how I imagine it working. Ghost Marchers, passive movement speed. So oh, so anyway, uh, this item is a lot more viable now. It uh, has uh, buffs across the board. I think we'll see this more often. Uh, there was not a whole lot of reasons to be picking that item up prior. Ghost Marchers, passive movement speed bonus reduced from 70 to 60. Bonus attack damage reduced from 24 to 22. 
All right. So some mobility reduction there. Ghost marchers are very strong. Um, I think that's fine. They all, uh, plated greaves also got some movement speed nerfs there as well. So another another uh, boots item getting changed in movement speed. Grimora of power. Oh, okay, this is a big one. <clears throat> SFP cost reduced from 1100 gold to 900 gold, so it's 200 gold cheaper. Activate effect has been reworked. So you no longer get the remove a stun or a crowd control effect on this item. And now what you get is you get activate to grant plus 30% spell damage to self for 15 seconds. Wow. Okay, so what comes to mind here is heroes with lots of burst. Heroes like Pyromancer, heroes like Wretched Hag, heroes like Dampir. Uh, this item is great for farming. It still gives cooldown reduction. Um, I think it's 20... 20%. 20% 20 reduced cooldowns. Okay. That's uh, that's really good. You get cooldown reduction. You get the dot effect for farming. And now you get plus 30% spell damage uh, for 15 seconds. You can probably use that for farming if you really needed to, but... For killing heroes, that's really good. So heroes with lots of nukes are going to love this item. The defensive effect on Grimoire Power was too strong for the game. It is likely to make a return with more appropriate negative side effects on another item in the future. <clears throat> in the meantime, Grimoire Power's effect is reminiscent of its previous passive effect. I think we're going to see this item on Spellcasters with lots of nukes. This, this 30% is really appealing, I think. Orb of Zamos and Gravelock, a bonus gold multiplier increased from 0.25 to 0.75 when a non-player controlled neutral creep is killed by the corresponding synchronized hero. Okay, so this got nerfed, I believe, last patch, and it's getting a buff again. So when your linked teammate kills neutral creeps, uh, you will get three times as much uh, bonus gold as you were getting in the last patch. Great for supports. Altwar's Heavy Helm, component change instead of ringmail now requires a shield of the five. Recipe cost reduced to this much. Total cost remains the same. Now passively grants two bonus strength, agility, and intelligence. Effect, active effect. Now also grants one armor to affected allies. Bonus armor effect does not stack with play degrees or shield of the five. Damage lock value for self increased from 70 to 80, 35 to 40 if you are a ranged hero that has Altwar's Heavy Helm. Shield of the Five now builds into an item other than Plated Greaves, making Ultor's Heavy Helm more viable, especially with the nerfs to the other team armor items. Aha, that's true. We had a lot of nerfed armor items. Ultor's Heavy Helm getting a buff here. Shield of the Five uh, credits to that is where the journal is. Okay. Uh, I think this item is actually very underrated and underutilized, and... I think it's very good on uh, heroes that like to frontline and initiate and tank lots of damage. I think this item is uh, is actually quite good for its cost. Uh, we'll see if people start picking this item up more or not, but uh, I think it's a very underrated item. Void Talisman, <clears throat> recipe cost reduced from by 100, total cost reduced, so uh, it's 1600 gold now. Void Talisman got some nerfs last patch. I think. This item still reduces damage when you have it activated by, is it 25%? Minus 25% to all damage dealt. So basically, you can't be offensive when you use this uh, item. But uh, it's, it's a little cheaper now. Okay, so a bit of a buff there once again to Void Talisman as it got nerfed previous patch. Matchmaking, map, and modes. Okay. Bug fixes. I don't think we're going to talk about bug fixes. Uh, that might be it, actually, for the balance. I think this is this is all bug stuff, which uh, we're not going to talk about that stuff. Uh, actually, let's look at items. Bottle health. 
Potion mana potion reflects damage from sources that are non-boss. Neutral creeps when not owned by a player will no longer accidentally dispel the active states of these items if the source deals damage to the hero while the source is dead. So a ranged projectile that hits a hero after the source dies. Okay, there were some bugs with sometimes health pots getting canceled and stuff. Each player can only purchase a maximum of one Gendro per game. All right, that's uh, that's it actually. So this was this was quite long. This was almost we almost made it to an hour and a half. Holy cow! A little over an hour. Uh, so we covered all the balance here from patch four point nine point two, which again launched today, March thirtieth. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the analysis here, and as always, if you like the content, make sure subscribe. Like the video, uh, this will be up on YouTube uh, probably in a day or so. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.